is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Campbellton Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham and another edition of Stars and Strikes Doubles, week two of our four-week series in the men's doubles format as we work our way towards getting another qualifying team in our Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions coming up in the spring. Happy New Year to you and yours. Hope it was a very safe one. Now, how about for you? Well, it's pretty safe. I'm still here, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah, we uh, got another exciting one on the on the books tonight. Uh, last week, of course, uh, uh, Brian and Bob, a fantastic 400 triple, and I think they're going to need all of that this week with these two guys. All right, let's meet all our bowlers. Uh, Dan talked about Brian and Bob. They were the story last week, our number five seeded team. They got the win last week. Bob Buxton from Merrimack, Massachusetts, and his partner from Nashua, New Hampshire, Brian McKinley. Okay, and Brian comes in averaging 121, 650 for roll-off score. Bob Buxton, 125 and 655 for his roll-off score. And our third-seeded team will be their opponents today, third-seeded by virtue of their total roll-off scores. Again, the bowlers compete individually, and then the scores are added up. And here's how our number three team stacks up from Warren, Massachusetts, Phil Clough and his partner from Natick, Massachusetts, Tom O'Brien. Okay, Phil comes in averaging 114, a little deceiving that average. His roll-off score, 672. Tom O'Brien, 127 for an average and 647 for a roll-off score. Of course, the uh, runner-up team in this week's show will share fourth place prize money of $200 and also receive the plaques from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. The uh, winning team will move on to try and uh, get up to the top of the ladder and perhaps qualify for that Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. We're going to get this match started. Three strings of Scotch Doubles Bowling right after this timeout. Don't go away. All right, here's where we are. Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley with a 4.08 last week to knock off our fourth-seeded team of Dennis Prusia and John Maffio. So Bob and Brian this week will take a shot at that number three-seeded team, Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien, the winners to move on. Mike O'Brien and Ron Root next week. And in two weeks, Dan Broder and... No relation. <laughs> That's right, no relation to Mike O'Brien, Tom wants to point out. And... Uh, in two weeks' time, it'll be Dan Broder and Peter Pereira to try and defend that number one spot. But right now, Brian McKinley to uh, start this match. Last week, he started strike spare. That was just an indicator of what was to come. This time, missing to the left. Almost converted for a spare. They're really going to have to go to top their performance last week. Bowl very, very well as a team. Ten bucks. Covers that six pin with no problem. Spare up in the second. Uh, first look at, first look this week, anyways, <laughs> at Tom O'Brien. Tom's uh, kind of approaching being a regular. Been here quite a bit lately. Here on uh, Stars and Strikes Doubles. In the last series, in fact, he was teamed with Paul Willits. They won one match before being eliminated. And uh, on the double series prior to that, back in November, Tom was paired with Glenn LeBlanc, and they won two matches before being eliminated in the championship match against Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. So this is the third double series in a row that Tom has qualified for. Oh, boy. 
in the pocket. He thought he was going to carry the five pin. The five pin just walked off the spot a little bit. Still has the five and the ten left. And a piece of wood next to the five pin and another one out in front. Probably going to try to pinch the five pin on the left and have it jump into the ten. Hmm, he's trying to do. And it's an eight. So 17 for the team to start. Now Bob Buxton. The teams, by the way, decide who will begin the match. And they must keep that rotation through the first two games. So that after two games, each bowler has rolled 10 frames. And then at the beginning of the third game, the teams can change the order if they want. According to maybe trying to take advantage of a hot bowler or if somebody feels more comfortable or whatever. We've seen that happen several times already. I think we should change it even more and they could pick somebody out of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> to bowl the last ball. <laughs> <laughs> but only if it's meaningful. Right? <laughs> So a little bit of strategy there involved that third game. If somebody's going much better than his partner, then they'll elect to have him bowl the extra two frames by starting him off in that third game. Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley, uh, teammates now, but back in February, they bowled against each other on Stars and Strikes on our singles format. It's an outstanding match, too. Brian won it 4-12 to 4-10. And uh, Brian had to come from 14 pins down in the third game to win it. He threw a 154 in the third game to win that match by two. Forty-five for the team through four. First look at Phil Clough. As I mentioned last time he was on, he has quite a ride get not only to the roll-offs, but for the taping sessions. Phil is from Warren, Mass, way out in the western part of the state. He was here uh, back in November, paired with Bob Mazur. And in their first match, Phil and Bob threw a 434. And who did they beat? Bob Buxton and <laughs> Reggie DeLine. They then uh, lost the next match to Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc. So Phil and Tom bowled against each other back in November, and now they are partners on the same it's team. It's a small world. Warren, Mass. That's my old stomping grounds. I came up, grew up in Palmer, Mass, which is just a few miles away from Warren. Oh, uh, great 10. Pretty shot by Phil. Only a 10, but worth another look. That's how it's done. Just cuts that two pin into the 610. Well, now that we're into January, Dan, uh, it's time for us to talk about taping sessions again so that we can uh, remind folks their chance to see Stars and Strikes. Both programs in person. And, of course, also uh, to our chance to ensure a fine lunch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a very nice Christmas card uh, from the Reverend Charlie and Dolly Hood in Beverly, old friends of mine from years ago on the North Shore. And uh, they, they arrived here one day in a taping session last year with just a terrific lunch for us. And we enjoyed it a lot. And we were kind of wondering whether they were going to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Not to bring us lunch, but just to watch the taping. <laughs> I don't think we're going across very well here, Doug. I think we're digging ourselves in a deep hole. Yes, we enjoyed the lunch, and uh, you can come back again. And we'd love to see you. That's yes. right. And if you'd like to come to a taping session, you don't have to bring us food or any other bribes. Uh, but please feel free to come down. We tape here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire on Route 28, not far from Route 93, off Exit 3. And uh, we've got a couple of taping sessions coming up this month. As you take a look at Tom O'Brien, back, back on Lane 32 after the spare by Brian McKinley. 
We've got a Sunday taping next Sunday, January 12th. Again, starting at about 9.30 in the morning and going till 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. We'll be taping men's singles on Sunday, January 12th. And on Tuesday, the 21st of January, we'll be taping women's doubles. That's, that'll be our next series here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. We'll have uh, a four-week series of women's doubles. First time we've ever had it. And Tom O'Brien matches the spare in the sixth with a strike of his own. Like he was going to have a seven-pin drop with a two, four, and seven left, but four kicks out, and with it goes the two, and also the seven for the strike. In fact, I think, in general, Dan and I would agree that the last thing you should do is bring us food. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, especially after the holidays. <laughs> But just to review that, it's Sunday, January 12th, we'll be taping men's singles, and Tuesday, January 21st, we'll be taping women's doubles. And Bob Buxton slips into the channel. That is a nine box. That's a nine box. So it's a nine fill. And then nine more in the seventh. Right back, though. It's going to fall this way. He's going to get the strike, but not quite. Let's be very careful here. Woods out in front, he can get by the front piece. No, well, he, was he got to by get, it all right. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to just slip by, either catch the five or the wood behind the five. We did, uh, as I mentioned last week, get a number of nice Christmas cards and New Year's greetings, uh, in addition to the one sent by. Charlie and Dolly Hood out in Beverly, and and we can't acknowledge all of them, but uh, we certainly do appreciate uh, those of you who took the time to drop us a card. And if you'd like to drop us just a, a letter or a line and uh, ask a question about the show or have a comment, we'll give you the address to write to just a little bit later on. The lead is nine for Buxton and McKinley. Not quite as fiery a start as uh, as last week. Not, no, not at all. Well, Phil is going to shoot at the one, three, seven, nine, and ten with some pretty favorable looking wood all over the deck. Let's see. And the ball comes by again. <laughs> everything was favorable except for carrying that seven pin. Did everything but knock it down. Pins were flying around it. The ball was flying around it. The lead remains nine. Brian McKinley, the newlywed. Leaving the four pin. When do you stop being a newlywed? Is there a timetable? A year? It was a year, yeah. yeah. I would say a year. I suppose for some people, two days, but <laughs> that's a <laughs> rule. It's two days. I think it all depends on your mental approach to it, I suppose. <laughs> Brian with a spare up in the ninth. We'll get some letters now. <laughs> yep. Address them to Doug Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian and his wife Debbie were married in September. Seven on the spare. Six, seven, ten. Going to try to snap that wood. Nope. Not quite. Again, a troublesome seven pin. So they'll be in the teens for this first game. One eighteen to be exact. And that leaves room for Tom O'Brien here to get a dent in this lead or maybe wipe it out. It's a couple of marks up on the board. Well, watch out. Coming back. Strike it is. Second strike for the team. They've yet to get a spare. See, just enough momentum off the nine pin, and then it comes rolling forward to trip the three pin. Pretty good hit again. This time you'll have the three, six, ten to convert for a spare.
Let's see. Yes. And a chance to take over the lead. 112 with a box to come, or rather a ball to come. Six pins will knot us up. Anything over six will give the lead to Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. A little high, but he got away with it. It's a nine drop, and the team of Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien do, in fact, take the lead in the last box for the first time in the match. They lead by three at the end of one. Game two coming right up. As promised, here's a look at our address if you'd like to jot us a line. If you have a bowling question that you'd like answered, or if you have a comment or a criticism or question about the show, send it in to Stars and Strikes Doubles, WNDS TV 50, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. And a reminder that this is a different address than the contest address for the regular edition of Stars and Strikes, so don't send postcards to this address. Just send comments and questions to this address and we'd appreciate it I'm trying to keep the mail separate could you, could you go over that again no <laughs> we're all set for game two and phil clough will get it started on lane 32 maybe another time <laughs> i got the first part your name and address <laughs> <clears throat> with that late charge at the end of game one by tom o'brien the team of clough and o'brien have taken the lead by three Triangle, two, four, five for Phil. Piece of wood in between should help him. Not on that side, though. Ooh. On that side, the ball came in contact with that piece of wood and actually hurt him because it wasn't able to carry through for the five pin. Deflected away. Phil has somewhat of an unusual delivery. He reaches way out at the end. It's good, good follow through. Doesn't throw the ball hard. Nope. It actually, his delivery really is not so much unusual as it does. It, it just emphasizes the follow through. Let's try to drive this piece of wood straight back. Yes. He does just that. Good shot. Much more difficult than it looked. Buxton spins it right through the middle for the spread eagle. As you mentioned last week, he does get the ball right out on the lane, just this side of the lob line. Boy, that 10 pin jumped. <laughs> I saw that. I didn't want to say anything because I maybe I was just seeing things. <laughs> that gives you an idea of the impact when that ball hits the pins. Eight box for Bob. A reminder that our presenting sponsor here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, as always, the folks at Tri-State Megabucks, and we do so much appreciate their support of Candlepin Bowling and Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Everything but the nine pin for Bob. That'd be a nice way to start the new year, win the Megabucks. Oh, boy. Well, let me see. You may not see me on the next tape date if that happens. No, I would still come. <laughs> uh, I would even buy you lunch, Doug. You know, a place with those yellow arches. You can have anything you want. <laughs> Tri-State Megabucks. Give it a try. Just imagine being rich. Bob has to wait a long time for the wood to settle down. Yes. He covers it. Boy, he lofted that ball way out there, too. It appeared to just hit the lob line. Very close. Gets a lot of speed. Well, Tom O'Brien working on a spare. Tom was kidding me that I owed him lunch for some reason. I don't even know. It was a friendly wager or something. I don't even remember. No, how about oh, that shot? Wow, off the wall. He's getting him a lunch for that shot. 
Even Tom is applauding. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Off the wall. Here we come. Well, Tom told me that uh, that he said to you at the end of the last double series when he was eliminated that he would be back again this time for his third straight time. And you told him you didn't think he could do it. At least that's what he said. I know. I would never say that. <laughs> I gotta talk to him because you're referring to me as the old man. <laughs> I guess he thinks I've given the game up. I don't know. <laughs> He's quite a character. A lot of fun. No, oh, and Brian McKinley fills a spare with two. One of the first mistakes that Brian has made in the two weeks. He may have gone through the middle on another spare. I can't remember him missing. No, he probably has, but certainly his ball well the last two weeks. So the lead now blossoms to 20 for Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. No, oh, and another one. Same spot. Brian finished sixth in the roll-off and thus was paired with the number five finisher, Bob Buxton. They were only five pins apart in the roll-off. Nine for Brian. And there you see it. There you see it. Spare up for the team of Clough and O'Brien. They're working on three in a row, in fact, and they've got the lead. Just about at the halfway point, Stars and Strikes doubles rolls on in a minute. Phil's going to try to keep this string of three marks going. And spares in the second, the third, and the fourth. And on top of that, going to add to the 21-pin lead. Seven Phil, maybe more. All the wood will turn anyway. Really turn that ball over. That ball broke about a foot and a half by the time it got to the pins. Mm, not quite enough. It seems that when Phil misses more often than not, it's to the right because he has to really cross that ball across the alley. If you pick something up, and this is a, it's a good pointer for a lot of the bowlers to, to check your follow-through. If you throw the ball and your arm comes across your body, that usually means that you release the ball too soon, and now you're fighting to get it back. Where you follow through and the arm is out in front of you, you know your, your release is pretty close to being right. And a couple times when, um, when Phil missed to the right, he did come across his body with his follow-through. Right on that spare. So four marks out of six boxes in this game, as you can see. 79 through six, plus the bonus ball coming. Bob Buxton trying to ignite something for his team. Again, a little bit full. Ooh, just missed that three pin, trying to slide it over. And it'll be a nine box. The lead now is 27. Most of it in this game. 24 pin lead in this game, 27 overall. Yeah, those three spares in a row really racked it up. Chance for Bob to pick up a mark, the four and the seven. Mm, oh boy. Picked it right off. I hate when that happens. <laughs> boy, you think you, you know, the object pin is the four. If you miss the four, your chances of making it are, are just about nil. You hit the object pin, you drive it straight back. A quarter of an inch either way, you have the spare. Tom O'Brien now. Tall left-hander will. Work on the spare left by his partner, Phil Clough. 
And he fills it with, we'll have to wait, an eight. I'm going to do some flying here with this wood. It's going to go practically right at the seven pin and hopefully get some sidewall action for the ten. Well, he knocked eight pins down and left four of them on the plate. Looks like he needs a slide ruler up there. He's <laughs> checking the wind and let me see if somebody opens the back door. It's time I throw the ball. I have to hit it here. Uh, I don't he think he wanted to hit it there. Check the slide rule if he plays it there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's where he wanted no. to play it. That, that was it. it. Yeah. For a 10 box. Although he just conked him. Just kind of hit himself in the head like he was a little mad at it went so easily over there. So I tend to think he was trying to go with the right hand tip of that wood out in front. One, two, four, and nine pins left. Nope. Well, two open frames for Brian McKinley to work on. Another 10 box. So Brian steps up, takes a peek at the scoreboard. That's what he sees. Team trailing by 35. They're certainly capable of making that up. <laughs> and there is a nine drop to start it. Like everything was moving towards a seven pin, but it stays up. Well, he's gonna have a clear shot, it looks like anyways. And that wood settles down. May just have to wait a little while, which is gonna be a little disturbing. It's getting into that crucial area where it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, the weight is, I, I'd never like to wait up there. You have to, you're supposed to wait till the wood settles down, and it's always a tough thing to do. And He's right at it, though. No problem there. Mark in the seventh. Fifth mark for the team. Big difference between this week and last week, though, for Buxton and McKinley. No strikes mm -hmm. yet, and they've been unable to put marks together. It seemed last week when they threw a strike, they had a spare on one side or the other of it as well, which really, well, they'd have to but the 400 triple. Seven on the spare. Three, six, and ten left. No, oh, he missed it. That would have been a big spare right there. Could have taken another seven, eight pins off the lead, perhaps. Instead, he loses a pin with the nine, so the lead is 29. Final two frames. Phil Clough. And how about that? Solid nine drop. He leaves the ten. Now, with his ball breaking so sharp from right to left, this is the time. He's going to use a little more speed to straighten the ball out. Oh. He just catches it. <laughs> Played it just right. 117, as you can see in the ninth. Bonus ball to come. Brooklyn side. Wait a minute. He's got some help coming. Phil and his wife, Diane, live in Warren, Mass., as we mentioned. They have three children, Eric, Quinton, and Deanna. And there is back-to-back -back spares. So one thirty-two in a ball to come. Phil works as a designer at Warren Pumps. He does a lot of his bowling at the State Bowl in Springfield. And he drops seven more for a 139 middle game. 260 after two for the team of Clough and O'Brien. And Bob Buxton needs two marks in these last frames just to keep things under 30. Boy. Right through the middle. Give it a run. Good. Pretty good. Split the three and the six, was able to grab the seven, but nothing came forward for the two or the four. Bob 
Cobb is off the head pin that time, but at least he has something to shoot at here. The one, two, four. One, two, four is and also a piece of wood in between the one and the two. Well, that's a help because obviously Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley don't want to leave themselves too much work for game three here. And they're going to have some, some catching up to do as it is. 36 pins are, is the lead now. Matching at least seven will keep it there. He's going to gain one, so it's swim. still coming. Falling the other way, he might have gotten them all. He'll take nine, a 108, and a two-string total, 226. So the lead will be 34 for Clough and O'Brien going into game three. And we'll have it here on Stars and Strikes coming right up. Back to go with game three. It'll be Brian McKinley leading it off for his team, and there you see their dilemma. Well, they're going to have to go back in the pages of last week and start throwing some of those strikes that they were throwing. Man, there's a spare. That is not an easy shot, uh, especially when you have to have marks. And he plays it on the left-hand side. So actually, the three-pin did most of the damage on the nine and the ten. That's the way he wanted to start. Now he wants the big fill and another one. Well, the ball looked like it should have been a little better than that. But he leaves himself a six-pin fill on the spare, but more important, a tough spare leave. Six, eight, nine, ten. One of the letters that we got over the holidays, Dan talked about, uh, or asked, I should say, about the status of Peter Flynn. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, Peter was taken seriously ill back about two months ago. But uh, we're happy to report that he is doing quite well and uh, recovering, actually has been bowling, we understand. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, He's not through the crisis yet. He's got an operation scheduled for later next month, but he is getting better, and uh, I'm sure he appreciates all the well wishes that he has been receiving. Absolutely. He's a tough competitor, so I'm sure he's going to pull through with this. Well, the lead has been reduced to 28 virtue of that spare six in the first frame. Oh, Tom got a big break there. A big break. Looked like he was going to have a six drop with uh, a split to shoot at, and instead he's got something a little more friendly, although he may have to be a little cautious of this wood. He's got to play it high. There it was. I had to turn around and ask Phil about playing it high. Now, Phil has got a few years on him, so he had to ask the uh, older gentleman how the to veteran. play the shot. Yes, the veteran, yeah. I'll have to remind him of that. <laughs> <laughs> Four horsemen right. One, three, six, ten. Outside. Yes. yes. Got it. They've made two very tough spares. <laughs> Here in the first three boxes, that shot made a little tougher by playing it outside. I think it's uh, probably made a tougher shot by playing it on the outside, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, usually you want to try to split, in his case, the one and the three. Nice nine pin drop on the spare. And he can play the wood if he'd like. And he does for back-to-back -back marks. That'll put a little bit of heat on Phil Clough now as he comes up to fill a spare left by Tom, and he's a little short, and it'll be a deuce. 
on the fill. Now you said at the beginning of the show, Dan, that Phil's average of 114 is deceiving. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, I originally from the western part of Massachusetts, and I've bowled a number of different houses in Massachusetts, and I think Phil bowls most of his bowling at the State Bowl, which is in Springfield, which is a uh, traditionally tough, tough, tough house. Extremely tough. So uh, that 114 average probably is a 122 or 23 or 25, a lot of other places. Phil trying to solve the triangle and goes right through the center. Hit the object pin. All well, this, all of a sudden, yeah. This <laughs> is going to change things around a little bit here. As we head to the break, a nine box for Phil. The lead has been cut to 19. And of course, when we come back, Brian McKinley will be filling that mark. So this is going to get interesting here in game three. Don't go away. The finish coming up. You're looking at Brian McKinley, and he's working on a very important spare. Hold it to the left. Just three. So both teams have made mistakes coming down the stretch in the third game. The lead is down to 16. But now, with that open in the fifth, team of Buxton and McKinley with just five to go. He wants to come right back with another one. Mm. He's going to have to shoot at the diamond. Piece three, of wood sliding right through there. Three, five, six, and the nine pin in the back, which is usually the problem. There it is. Just as you said. So, two opens, and Tom O'Brien steps up. Tom from Natick, Mass. He's the president and CEO of Venture Enterprises, a wholesale merchandise company. And he's going to have a spare leave. Tom does most of his bowling at the Fairway Sports World in Natick and at the Sudbury Bowl in Sudbury. He's looking at the 610. Nice piece of wood laying out in front of the 610. Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's free. You can use it. <laughs> and he used all of it. The 11th mark for the team. Nate Phil. That puts the lead back up to 26. So really set the stage if he can pick this one up. As it stands, Buxton and McKinley are going to have to almost mark out. Or at least have uh, three other four boxes. All right, we're down to this. The last turn for each of the four bowlers, starting with Bob Buxton. And there's the situation. The team of Buxton and McKinley trailing by 25. Looking for their second win in a row. Mike O'Brien and Ron Root await the winners of this match. And Bob Buxton starts with a big nine drop. The team has yet to throw a strike in this match. Last week they had six of them. Just looking at the four, uh, six pin. And he really needs it. Oh no, Ooh, to the left. Make it a 10. Oh boy. 
How about another nine drop? It always happens after you miss one, I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> in fact, we had a running joke in the league. If you miss a single, I said, well, here comes another spare leave because I'm going to drop eight or nine on this because it's going to make me feel that much worse <laughs> about missing it. <laughs> and, and it does. Spare number 10 for the team of Buxton and McKinley. Keeps the their hope alive. Bill Clough is going to try to do something to put a little damper on that, though. Opposite of open frame in the seventh. Well, this wood in the back makes this a little more interesting because ordinarily you'd be worried about the eight pin. The four horsemen, let's see. Yes. Oh, you called it. If nothing else, it kept the ball in play. I think the ball actually clears out the eight pin off the piece of wood. Yep. Exactly. Wouldn't have gone otherwise. Oh, he left it short. Well, it's four. Again, there is wood here that could be a factor. No, missed the head pin. Ten box for Phil. So, down to the final two. It's 95 plus a ball there in the eighth. As Brian McKinley will come up and fill it. The lead is 29 less whatever he puts on this mark. He really needs a nine or a strike. And he'll... Oh, oh wow. wow. Do you believe that? Wow. <laughs> not Ooh. only does he not get the four pin, but he's left with the four ten. Well, he's still a makeable spare because of the wood in between, but uh, it certainly looked like he was going to have a nine drop and just a ten pin left. Oh, what a great nice shot, shot that is. That's a great shot. Question is... What more do they have to do now to try and make this close? Nice spare there using the wood effectively. Uh, he's still got to think eight, nine strike. Definitely another spare. Seven fill. That's 120 in the ninth. I don't believe they can. Oh, oh. oh that shot. <laughs> the ball again. Watch the ball come in contact with a piece of wood and kind of like a cue shot. Keeps it in play, and good thing, because it wouldn't have carried the, the six pin. Well, he's just going to throw uh, a big ball. He, of course, he'd like to strike, but he's get as many as he can and see what happens. Clough and O'Brien will not have to mark in order to win. It'll be a six drop and a 136 for the team. So Buxton and McKinley, after a 408 last week, throw a 362 this week with no strikes. And uh, all Tom O'Brien has to do is get 13 pins in two boxes. A 103 in this game will do it. You look back on the, on the especially this last game, uh, Bob and Brian had one, two, three, four, five, six marks, and the fills were six, nine, three, eight, seven, and six. Three pins will do it for Tom O'Brien. Keeps it safely on, and that'll do it. So the team of Clough and O'Brien will move on to face Mike O'Brien and Ron Root next week. And Tom finishes it off with a spare for the ball to come. Tom and Mike, by the way, not related. Tom from Natick, as we've said, and Mike O'Brien is from Biddeford, Maine. Quite a mileage uh, spread there for those two guys. And strike on spare in the tenth to polish it off. A 120 for the team and a three string total, 380. So the final count, 380 for Clough and O'Brien, 362 for Buxton and McKinley. And we'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back to Stars and Strikes Doubles, and we're going to chat with Brian McKinley and Bob Buxton, our runners-up for this week. Uh, after the big 408 last time, the uh, the big score just didn't happen again. Uh, it seemed like this time, guys, you just weren't able to. First of all, you weren't able to put any marks together, which really was the secret uh, last week. Yeah, um, just couldn't get any strikes. Mm -hmm. A lot of spare leads and missed a few, but no strikes. Big difference. It's uh, kind of a match where you get you get behind, and then you have to constantly catch up. And you did make a run at it there in the third game. Yeah, I, I feel that one of the keys was when I missed those two singles in the second string, and uh, I just we can't, we started coming back, but uh, just couldn't string anything get together like you said the strikes wasn't falling for us and well again uh, though big big performance last week and we give you uh, fourth place prize money share two hundred dollars and we'll have the plaques for you too from the nnr trophy company of winchenden and uh, thanks for both coming uh, we're yeah. seeing you a lot lately it seems so uh, hopefully you'll be back again soon thanks guys okay. all right brian mckinley and bob buxton our runners up and now let's chat with the victors shall we tom o'brien and phil clough we'll have them come on up they're going to be looking for uh, another. They're fighting for who's going to stay farthest away from me. <laughs> congratulations, Phil, and Tom. Congratulations to you. Uh, you just uh, were able to put things together and and get what you needed. You had a couple of little mini explosions there, putting marks together, and that was good enough. Yeah, Tom bowled real well. He's a big guy. He's got big shoulders. Oh, now wait a second. You're being modest because you had a you had a, you had a nice little run there too yourself. Oh, well, I got a few marks, but uh, I didn't <laughs> bowl it very well. I know, Tom. You're, you're, we were joking about the fact that you've been becoming a regular here on uh, on doubles. So you got one win. Now you need to get two more. <laughs> yeah, definitely two more. Third time's a charm. I hope. You know, I told Danny last time when I was on the show. We were joking with Danny, and he says, "Yeah, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it." I says, "I'm going all the way up to Meredith, New Hampshire, and I'm gonna make the show. I'm gonna try out, and I'm hopefully getting the top ten and make it." And I mean, when I got the phone call to see who I was partnering with, I said, "Oh, great. I've bowled with Phil before, and Phil's a dynamite bowler. Just, you know." It was like a team effort today. Mm -hmm. Nobody bowled well. I got a couple of marks, but I missed a lot of marks. And, you know, uh, Brian and Bobby, they started making a comeback on us. And I said, oh, wow, the, the way I was bowling, I figured they're going to they're gonna beat us in the last string. Well, yeah. you boys, guys both uh, had to make a long drive to get here. So far, it's uh, been worthwhile. So we're going to have you come back next week and uh, face Mike O'Brien and Ron Root. How does that sound? Okay, we'll be here. All right, congratulations again, guys. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's take a look at the ladder now and uh, and see exactly what will be happening in the next two weeks. It'll be semifinal Sunday, of course, next week here on Stars and Strikes, both on the uh, uh, mixed doubles at noon and here on men's doubles at one. It'll be the team of Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien against the number two seeded team of Mike O'Brien, no relation, and Ron Root. Next week's winner uh, will be O'Brien. That's right. <laughs> yes, That's there'll right. be an O'Brien on a winning team next week. Should be an interesting matchup. Uh, we haven't seen Michael Bryan in uh, quite a few years. All right, let's uh, invite you back then at 12 noon next Sunday here at Park Place Lanes for two hours of candlepin bowling on Stars and Strikes, of course, and then here on Doubles. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, so long from Park Place Lanes.